Welcome everyone to another episode of Atomic Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. Uh, we just were on Facebook and Instagram Live doing some talk about Walking Dead Season 8, which debuted yesterday. Uh, but we're here to talk about the top 10 cinematic movie villains ever. Top 10 cinematic movie villains ever. Now, Juan's kind of upset at me um, because he says I didn't give him any parameters and I said, dude, it's just, it's general. The top 10, the, the best villains ever. Like, the best of the best. It doesn't need to be specific. But it, you're mixing it shit. Does, it, it doesn't need to be the best horror villains. It doesn't need to be the best... Uh, uh, that, that's a uh, problem because... Chi child villains. That's dude, a problem, man. Um, uh, the, the most, like, for instance, like, if you said our favorite villains, the most charismatic villains, it'd be a different list. No, 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 but you know what? Charismatic... Horror, it all fits in the one. If you put all those villains in the one, and you can only pick the no, ten best you, you ever. No, because you basically said most villainous villains. No, the the the, the, be, the best villains are the villains. Like like you have a you have a pool of villains. I I couldn't grasp you know? this concept, so my list is all. I, I don't know how he didn't grasp this concept. It's I like just, the top ten most. In your opinion, the most sinister, evil villains, it could be whatever. They could have been mass murderers. They could have been cheaters and liars. They could have been A cheater? What the, why the fuck would a cheater make it? Because maybe the way that the villain was portrayed on film makes them evil, you know? Well, I think someone's trying to reach you. Your phone just rang twice, and now the shop phone is ringing. Yeah. No. Oh, someone was trying to call you. Hold on. Who was that? Oh, it's your boy. Yeah, damn, he's crazy calling you. You're treating him how to be a. You're, 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 he's he's like stalker status. No, it's maybe a ten year old needs his dad. <laughs> I didn't have a cell phone at ten, so I can't relate. I don't mm. know. I don't know what that's like to 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 need to be able to be able to reach my dad at any time of the no, day. No, yeah, we didn't have. You don't know what that's like either. No, it's got to be weird. I, I remember right? beepers. That was fucking crazy. My dad didn't have a beeper. Yours dad did, right? Did you didn't have a beeper? Not till I was 17. Oh, shit. I know, I know. You got in there late. Yeah, but I didn't need it, you know? It was a pain in the ass. It was. Beeper codes. Yeah, especially people 911 you, and then you're rushing. You don't understand what it's like. First of all, you had to go get changed, then rush around and find a fucking pay phone. Then you call, be like, what's the fucking emergency? I'm like, no, I just want to talk to you. Just want to say hi. Yeah, just want to say what's up. Yeah. Like, you hungry? Be like, that's not a fucking emergency. Do you remember 911 was like emergency, but then like 811 was like, it's close to an emergency, but yeah. it's not? Yeah, you like need information. No, that was 411. Oh. 411's like, yo, I just need some information. Oh, I never got 811. Oh, 811 was like, 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 it's important. It's not like life threatening important, but it's right. important. 143. Uh, that was, I love I you. I love yeah. you. Yeah. 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 43. 40, ah, 43 was fuck, fuck you. you. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Beeper goes, huh? Yeah, beeper code. 823, thinking of you. Add the six, it meant always. No one that's watching this understands this. Maybe like two people. I I, I, I don't know. I don't know. So anyways, anyways, so top 10 cinematic movie villains ever. You guys can play along. You can leave comments. You can give us your opinion. Uh, first of all, we are on YouTube.com. We are going to give our first five. We're going in order, by the way. Ten being, you know... Still, if you if you hit the top ten, you're good. Uh, but ten is not the the mecca uh, number one almighty number one is. We're gonna do ten through six on Facebook and Instagram Live as well as YouTube. And if and for Facebook and Instagram, if you want to see what our five through one was, you're gonna have to go to our YouTube channel and check it out. Go to YouTube.com, search Corker Comics, and we're right there. Atomic Pop uh, for the top ten cinematic villains. This is going to be filled with spoilers. This is not like listen. Juan said to me, well, I'll just pick whoever played Hitler and make him every 10 because Hitler's a bad guy. I was going to make a list with, like, all 10 of my spots, just Hitler. Just just Nazi-related Nazi stuff. Yes. Which, let's not get wrong, that that's really bad stuff. That really is. But 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 it, it's, uh, you, you know, I asked Juan, I said, Juan, Juan, stop, stop. Of course, you, of course you can easily do that. And don't be so general. You know, like, don't pick the white people in Amistad. I was going to pick, like, Amistad, you know, the like, villain is white people. You know, which which is so general. <laughs> it's not general. It's so general. I just said, I, I said. I'm it, sorry, white Southerners. I, I, it's still very general, you All know. Right. Uh, so I asked them to be specific, and I said, pick pick in Europe. If you put every single bad character in, it could, it, they could, it doesn't matter what your level of bad was. It just they, they just portrayed, like, they were a villain, you know. They were the villain. Now, how they were written, how they were, how the person acted on them, that is the top 10 villains or whatever it is. So we're going to have very conflicting lists. I know it already. 100%. There's going to be like questions of what makes one a villain versus what one not. It doesn't, no question it doesn't matter. Mine. Like, like yes, it, your, your kill, your number of kills, of course, makes you a villain. But at the same time, like, like are, are you, are, 
Maybe you're just a psychopath, and that makes you a villain. Maybe you're a thief, and that makes you a villain. I didn't put Gordon Gecko on my list from Wall Street. Because he's a hero? But he, no, he's not. Gordon Gecko is a he's villain. He's a complete hero. He's a thief. He's not a thief. He's a thief. He's not a thief. He steals from 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 hardworking people. He's honest the about prof- it, though. But that doesn't make him a hero. In my eyes, he's a hero. Oh, Reed my is God. fucking good as shit. Well, whatever. Anyway, so let's get right into it. Top 10 cinematic movie villains ever. I'm going to let one, 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 go ahead. Open it up. What's number 10? And wait, here's the, we're going to give the actor, <laughs> if applicable, the character, the movie they were in, and the year the movie came out. Go on. So my number 10 villain is Anakin Skywalker from uh, Star Wars Episode 3. Uh, 2005, he was played by Hayden Christensen. Um, why did I put him on my villains list? Is because he kills a ton of children. This is what my fucking list is going to be like: child murders and shit. If that's no fun. If, hey, if if, if if that's if that's how if hey, so, that's your list. So I can't Hayden, argue with Hayden it. Christian. So Anakin Skywalker towards the end of the movie he turns to the dark side. He's still not Vader. Uh, he's still Anakin, and he decides to go and kill all the Jedi children. You know, I sh- I, I I hear what you're saying, and Anakin, but I don't see Anakin as the the real villain in in that movie. I s- he's a tragic figure that was that was manipulated and and taken advantage of, and and because even though he's the most powerful user of the Force ever, he's he has a very weak mind. You know, the minute that you're killing a child, I think the manipulation is over. I, I hear what you're saying. I'm not listen. I'm not gonna, like it, you. You can't manipulate I'm someone gonna, into killing listen, a child. I'm not going to argue that he wasn't a bad guy, but I just don't see him as the central villain. And and no, and, but but to me, he's the one that actually carried out the murder of the children. So I got him as my number ten villain. And, um, and what year did Revenge of the Sith come out? Two thousand and five. Wow. Right. I yeah. thought it was earlier. No, I know it was around that time. Yeah. I just, so that movie's twelve years old now. Yep. Revenge of the Sith was a great movie. It was pretty good. It's it's easily like I it it's probably like it's 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 up there. Yeah. As as one of my favorite Star Wars movies. There's a lot of George Lucas haters out there. No, I liked Revenge of the Sith. Um, but re, but Revenge of the Sith. I episode mean, two wasn't that bad either. Episode Attack Clones was. I mean, listen, yeah. they were all flawed. There were things about them that was like, right. what the fuck? You know what I mean? But. But at the end of the day, like when when Anakin's lying there, maimed, lose, he doesn't have any limbs left, and he's just right. yelling at 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 Obi Wan, saying how much he ha- I hate you. Mm-hmm. Like I was just like, whoa. And this is why I don't see him as a villain. Like I felt sympathy for him, you know. Huh? Like I, I like even though he even though he did all these horrible things, he almost killed his wife, uh, an unborn child, children. He didn't know they were children. Unborn, unborn child. Uh, he killed a ton of Padawans and stuff. The, the younglings, I guess. I mean, eventually he does become Vader. He does eventually become Vader, but 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 the the character of Anakin slash Vader is 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 a is a story of a tragic hero more so than a villain. I think, um, if you really want to look at the character of Vader, and we won't discuss Vader because that wasn't the person on your list. No, we're discussing it was Anakin. we're discussing Anakin from Revenge of the Sith. Valid point. Um, I disagree with you, which means he's not on my list at all. But I see where you're coming from. All right, now here's the deal. Um, Juan is going to he's just gonna butcher my list. He's gonna be like, What the what the hell is going on here? Like I can't believe that even made your list. So, real quick, I know we said we weren't gonna do this, but listen, this guy was on my list until like late last night. We're not doing I, the I top eleven. The, I, I no, because I have honorable I'm, mentions. I'm not put I'm not putting him I'm not even gonna say all I'm gonna say is real quick, Ron Silver, Senator McComb from Time Cop, nineteen ninety four. I I, I did not – he was on my list. My list was done for the past couple of days, and I yeah. switched him out last minute. I just got to acknowledge him because he was great. White people, I'm a stud. Um, whatever. So my number 10 is uh, Kathy Bates playing Annie Wilkes in the movie Misery. Right, in Misery. 1990. Okay. Okay. Why would I disagree with that? I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying my ho- everyone, I'm, but some people are going to be like, you're crazy. First of all, if you haven't seen Misery, it's a Stephen it's King great. movie. It's, it's amazing. Kane, right? James Con. James Con. James, James Con and Kathy Bates, and Kathy Bates is insane. What a fabulous job! And it's funny because I've seen Kathy Bates do other roles, and mm. she is not that person at all. Kathy Bates won an Oscar. It mm. was like her breakout role from that her yeah. career really launched. And you know, this is the girl that was obsessed with the author, and you know, literally held him captive and tortured him. Yeah. In her in her cabin house deep in the woods. Most famous scene is when she uh, takes out his uh, ankles with, with the sledgehammer. With, and yeah. But wasn't there like a wood piece? She put she put wood between yeah. the legs and then, and just, then literally just sledgehammered oh his feet. No. 
Yeah, which, it, yeah, it was crazy. The, she was insane. You and know, all women have a little bit of uh, that character in them. I mean, I don't think all women are going to, like, be physically violent. No, but they all have that in them. I, I mean, I it don't. It just manifests in different forms. I, I think we're all crazy in some way, shape, or form, honestly, but, but sure. So, Kathy Bates, Annie Wilkes, Misery, check out the movie, number 10. What's your number 9? John Doe. From seven, so good. I almost 19, 19, he almost made my list and I didn't put him 1995, on. Nineteen ninety five, so good. Kevin Spacey, so good, so good. I can't argue. And can't argue. Uh, so before that, you know, Anakin, I had them there because he's a child murderer. Now I have a serial killer. Okay, that's all you have to say about it. Because there's no pra- That's all you gotta say about John. All right, Hill? so seven is one. Actually, like seven is one of my favorite movies ever. Seven's a crazy movie. Yeah, it's really great. Very disturbing. I like the it's, fact it's more like disturbing. Intellectually than it yeah. is visually. I mean, they because they don't really show the craziness of it. Like it gets in your head. I mean, I I have a there is a really good jump scare though. So what he does is basically he's a serial killer that's carrying out the seven deadly sins. He's John Doe because his identity is never revealed because it doesn't matter, right? the The whole story is them going after the serial killer, but the focus of the story is actually Brad Pitt. It's about his character. He plays a detective with Morgan Freeman. And they're trying to figure out um, who's doing all these killings that follow along the seven deadly sins of the Catholic Church. Uh, there was a moment where they had a fat guy for gluttony, right? And so he made him, like, eat himself to death. Yeah. Uh, and, and so... Uh, no, not eat himself. They he eat to death. Just to eat, yeah. He constantly yeah, it, eat. F- eat. Um, so towards the end of the movie, basically, he turns himself in and you figure, well, what the fuck? He's still got two sins left. And that's what happens is... A package is delivered to the field where Brad Pitt is there, uh, the detective and Morgan Freeman, and it's the what's in the box, and in the box is actually, you know, Brad, Brad Pitt's, Pitt's wife's, wife's head. head. Yeah, and that wasn't uh, the most disturbing part to me. No, it wasn't the most disturbing. The most disturbing, disturbing but was part to me was the, w- w- was was the guy wearing the the dick brace with a knife on the end of it, oh. and he fucked the whore, and 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 what what was it? What what was the lust? Sin? Lust, yeah, yeah, and. And the guy's just crying hysterically. He's like, he's like, he, he was gonna kill me. He told me to fuck her, and I fucked her. I fucked yeah. her. I fucked her. Like, I can't even imagine that. Yeah. Not just the pain the woman went through, but like the like the, like the mental torture that guy. Well, I'd was rather going be the through. fucker than the fucky in that position. I, I mean, sure. I, I think anybody would, but but what a disturbing mm-hmm. scene uh, so that was. So John Doe seven, for your number nine. Number nine. <laughs> it wasn't seven. Yeah, seven. <laughs> yeah right. Uh, my number nine is uh, Frank Langella as Skeletor in Masters of the Universe, 1987. Yeah, he's really bad. First of all, there's a lot of haters on Masters of the Universe. No, it's a great movie. But there's a lot of haters on it. I, I, Why? I, I, we're in comic stores, but there are people that talk shit about that movie. Well, now, before you know, its time, it was you know, like they, 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 You know, that little troll character they don't like with the cosmic uh-huh. key and the yeah. Courtney Cox character and the musician. I get it. Like, it's very 80s porn, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but first of all, like, Dolph Lundgren did great as He-Man, but we're not yeah. going to talk about Dolph Lundgren. We're here to talk about Frank Langella. And Skeletor... Holy fuck, man! First of all, the makeup team did a fabulous job. the 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 costume was on point. They just did a, an amazing job at bringing the cheesy Skeletor we knew from the cartoons to real life. And the Frank Langella did a amazing job playing him. Skeletor was evil. Visit the movie like you you could sense just how evil this character is. There was nothing funny about him at all. Whereas in the cartoon, like he had a very like slapstick villainous way about it. Well, Frank Langella, it was known to be like a Broadway actor. And so... Definitely to the, a theater so, actor. Yeah, yeah, he was a theater actor. Yeah. So he brought a lot of that seriousness to the character. He didn't play him as a comic character. He played him as he would like someone on Broadway. Yeah, and, and he's just... He's, he's, he's evil. Yeah. He's just fucking nasty. Hey, that's fine. I'll give it to you. Uh, I'm not going to complain. Yeah. And and I, I love Masters of the Universe. Yeah, I, I thought that was a, it was great a good movie. movie. And even, the, even though they didn't have a lot of characters that I liked in it... Like they didn't have they didn't have Beast Man they didn't have uh, Trap Jaw or any of those other characters like the the vil- the other villains that they made in that movie were great as well you yep. know so g- good job good interpretation uh, for for the movie verse in that in that age too eighties yeah, you know um, so yeah Frank Langella Skeletor Masters of the Universe your number uh, eight. eight Alex DeLarge. From Clockwork Orange. Clockwork Orange, 1971. It you was, want to know he something? was played by Malcolm McDowell. I've, I've never seen that movie. I know. So, going along the I line know. of what I'm doing here, 
Alex DeLarge plays a serial, like not a serial killer. He just plays a guy that just kills and rapes. And at one point he murders, uh, a, he murders uh, this dude, rapes his girl, I think kills her with a giant ceramic fucking cock. Like this is just an all around horrible human being. I didn't know who to pick, but Malcolm McDowell, um, I was kind of torn between him and Caligula, but I had to go with Alex DeLarge. Okay, I mean, if I w- you haven't, you got to see Clockwork Orange. Man. I know I have to see it. It's uh, there's a few movies on my to do list All that right. I haven't seen. Like I just saw Scarface for the first time a couple weeks. Get ago. Get the fuck out of here! I know, I know, I know. What do you think? I thought it was good, but I don't think it's better than Goodfellas, Casino, or the Godfather trilogy. I mean, it's better than Godfather three and Godfather one. It's not better than Godfather. It's better 1. than Casino. It's not better than Godfather one. Bro, uh, how many iconic lines and, and, came out and, of that movie? And it's way not. It's like Casino. Fuck you. It's not better than Casino at all. Yeah, I think it was better. Casino bores the shit out of me. Casino is amazing. Right. Like I, it rivals Goodfellas. Well, that's fucking crazy. All right, whatever. Where, where, where do we on number number eight. Uh, eight? My number eight is Ian McDiarmid as Emperor Palpatine from oh. the Star Wars saga. Um, not a specific movie. Now we're playing the whole. This is why we need parameters. Well, I mean, if I want to pick a specific, sure. I will I say Return of the Jedi, Fantastic. which came out in 1983. Okay. Um, and I have that year down because that's... that's because you knew I was going to do this. Well, I, you. you know what? That's when the Emperor was really at his most evilness, if that's why a word. Why was he evil? He he just embodies... What se- did he do that was evil, though? He's, he, he, he has, he's selfish. He has no loyalty. He's, he's, he, he doesn't value life. He 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 just he he just craves power and control and 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 he doesn't care how he gets there. And if you if you watch him in episode one, two and three and his rise to power, he's very calculating uh, betrayal. Like there's there's nothing nice about the dark side in the Star Wars verse. Uh, Every villain, uh, Darth Maul, Darth Vader, you know, uh, Darth Darth. uh, um, um, Count Dooku, all those guys, like you know, th- they're all very evil with very evil intentions, and 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 they don't care about anybody. They just don't. And but there's no loyalty either. The Emperor is quick to d- to 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 discard his apprentice like like that. He right, was, then, he was so quick to just just ditch Darth Vader, who he's been with for twenty something years. But he was, he, but so, but he was like a sociopath, just being a sociopath, not necessarily evil. He was evil. He was evil. You could see he liked it. He liked what he was. He liked the fact that he was electrocuting the shit out of Luke Skywalker. He enjoyed it. He got pleasure out yeah, of Luke it. Luke Skywalker was annoying as fuck. I would electrocute the shit out of him too. It doesn't make me a villain. You're, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. He he he's he's one of he's one of cinematic history's greatest villains. The Emperor Palpatine. And unfortunately, the Emperor is overshadowed by the character of Darth Vader because uh I mean, just Vader in itself is is a great character, but he's nowhere as near as evil as the Emperor. He's yeah, just I don't, not. I don't know anything that the Emperor did that was so evil. There, there would be no dark side. There would be no. There would be no no the empire. Dark... There would be none of that without without the Emperor's direction and manipulation of but, the system. But then that that brings a question: Was the Empire actually evil? Yes, the Empire was evil. Why was the Empire evil? Because it was a dictatorship. So that doesn't that make it evil. It took away free will of the citizens of the galaxy. Uh, in what respect? Did did we not see the same movie? Yeah, but I. So I what? Mean, what you're saying the rebellion is the fucking enemy? Are you saying the rebellion are the heroes? Yeah. What would you consider ISIS? No, fuck you. you I mean, no. it's a matter wait, of pers- wait, 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 no, wait, no, no. Stop, it's a matter stop, of perspective. Stop, stop. Are you comp- no? Stop, stop. Are you comparing Princess Leia and the rebellion to ISIS? I mean, it's not like the rebellion kidnaps children and indoctrinates them and sends them out on suicide missions. Dude, oh, oh, they do. Stop, stop. The empire does not value that. The fact that they blew blew up Alderaan. The fact that in, in Alderaan was the enemy. No, Alderaan was a peaceful planet. That just the senator of that planet was a part of the rebellion as well as Princess Leia. <laughs> Done fucked up. But so what? So what? A whole planet of innocents die. I mean, it, it, to it, teach a lesson. It, it all comes, yeah, that's not villainy. It, it, it's all about perspective here. No, you're sitting here talking about mass murders and stuff. That I, you just destroyed a planet. Well, you know, part of, of the innocence. I'm just saying the empire is not necessarily evil. The empire is totally evil. But you want to know? At the end of the day, listen. The 
you could argue a stormtrooper or a general or all those people, they're not evil, they're just doing their job. You know? How do you walk the line between the real villain and who and, and someone that's just trying to make it? And that's what you gotta do. You're playing it safe. I'm, the villain here is Emperor Palpatine. As Susie Fett, who's a Star Wars nut, what do you think? As Susie Fett says he's evil and, and he manipulates the whole thing. So that that that's my that's my guy. You go ahead. Number seven. Freddy Krueger. He's played by Robert Englund, Nightmare on Elm Street. You want to know something? Came out in 84. I've never seen one Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Are you scared? Do you need me to go over to your house? No, truth I'll to, watch them with tr- you. Truth of the matter is, is, is we can all agree that Nightmare on Elm Street was in its peak in the 80s, correct? Yeah. All right. Uh, iconic character. I knew what he looked like. I thought he was cool. I thought the whole hand with the fucking knives on it was, was cool. But... Um, my parents really weren't into slasher f- flicks, and they didn't really want uh, me or my siblings to really watch them. And I remember all the kids at school would be like, hey, you know, talk about the movies. And all I could talk about was, like, what I read on the back of the VHSs and the few pictures that I saw, you know? And, and, and that's how I described the movie and stuff. And I remember asking my parents, I was like, can I watch that? And my dad was always just like, you know, I mean, if why do you feel you need to watch a movie of, of someone slashing up other people? And then my dad would get this whole philosophy thing about how the world is fucked up and how, like, it's okay to watch that, but it's not okay to, to you know, we can we can look at Fangoria magazine at any age, but Playboy is up high where, where, where you can't reach it and it's bagged in black because a naked body is more offensive than someone getting slashed up, you know? I like a combination of both in my <laughs> pornography. <laughs> well, well, well. Well, but Freddy Krueger. But, but 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 to that point, I've never seen I've never seen Halloween. That, that's crazy. I've never seen one Halloween, Halloween? movie. Holy I've shit. never seen one Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I've never seen any Friday the Thirteenth. Um, I've 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 never seen Phantasm or any Hellraisers. Uh, so basically, any horror slasher flicks I've never seen because I, uh, I, my my parents just really sheltered all of us from it and said that you know. But you, you can watch them now. I can watch them, but I have no so desire. You should watch. I have no desire to. Fre- the first nightmare, the first few Nightmare on Elm Streets were actually really good. Freddy Krueger is a child uh, molester, raper, killer, and uh, the parents of these children kill him on Elm Street, and then he comes back to haunt their dreams. And if he kills them in their dreams, they die in real life. And it made for some awesome scenes, including Johnny Depp dying in a bed of uh, blood, and it's great. But he was a child. Molester. Yeah. Did you that see? The, did you see the remake that they that they did for Nightmare on Elm Street? No. The one starring the guy that played Rorschach? No. God no. Why? I don't know. Robert England's the shit, man. No, no. It was a good. It was. A, it, he's a good. He's a great character. I'm not going to argue that. Yeah. But you should yeah. definitely watch it. I mean, late in the later the later Nightmare on Elm Street, it got kind of like stupid because uh, they made it kind of cartoony. Okay. Uh, it was all about the way he killed people, like kind of like what Saw has become, you know? Yes. Um, but one thing that you could watch that was surprisingly good was Freddy vs. Jason. Oh, that was That good? was really, really good. Really? It was fa- There's this one point where Freddy just gets so annoyed and screams at Jason, why won't you die? And it's one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen. Wow. Great. Hey, Batsy just walked in. Hey, Batsy. Batsy just walked in. So, Freddy Krueger, uh, um, you know, because my, my list has... He's been watching us. You know, all right. Uh, this is thank insane. you, Susie Fett. Go ahead, number seven. Um, my number seven is uh, Glenn Close as Alex from yeah, Fatal, Fatal Attraction, Attraction, 1987. That's my number seven. Listen, if you haven't seen Fatal Attraction, first of all, it's a great movie. Michael Douglas is great. Michael Douglas is another guy that doesn't make bad movies, by the way. No, he does not. Um, and um, Fatal Attraction, Glenn Close, she won an Oscar mm-hmm. for this role. And listen, if you're a guy and you've dated quite a few times, there's there's probably a chance that you have experienced a crazy chick, a girl that just will call you, text you all the time and just like not leave you the fuck alone and you know, and you made the mistake of fucking her, you know? And now she feels that she uh that you were inside her? Yeah. So she deserves a phone call? She did, that, that she's she's the love of your life and all this stuff like that. You yeah. Know? No, I get you. And, but Glenn Close took it to another level. You she know? really did. She kidnapped his kid. She she killed their pet rabbit and boiled it. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, and 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 she was just, she was insane. Insane. Crazy calling. Going through to extreme measures to get telephone numbers. Like crazy shit. You know, and don't get me wrong. I think we all got a little bit of crazy in us, especially when it comes to love. We've all, 
we all have done something just a little sliver of of like whack job shit some once once in our life at least you know but Glenn Close really defined yeah. I've the, defiled the, some the, people the, boy the crazy stalker you know significant other or just you know you know mistress or yeah. or which is what which is what she was and uh great movie very suspenseful Really makes you think twice about who you want to get in the sack with. It's a whole line of these types of movies. You got to figure out how many guys have gone through this, man. Like single white female did kind of the same thing. See, that was a crazy movie yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, 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 what was the one with Rebecca De Mornay where she dies on the picket fence? The hand oh, that rocks the cradle. Yeah. 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 Re- Rebecca De Mornay is hot. Anyways, yeah. all right. So uh, that that's 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 my number seven. Glenn Close from Fatal Attraction. Your number seven. My number six. Oh, we're number six. My top five are insane. So number six is Lee Woon Ying. He's from Old Boy, played by Yu Yi Tae, and it was in 2003. I don't even know what that is. Old Boy. So (laughs) what's funny, you need to ask Alex. My brother got so fucked up by Old Boy. He was fucked up for like a week because of this movie. Okay. So basically this guy is, in his younger years, having sex with a girl, ends up being his sister. Um, this other kid witnesses it and uh, makes a remark to this other kid and just like leaves town eventually his parents move he's gone right and so all this fucked up drama happened to this kid right and eventually his sister kills himself right so years later he kidnaps the guy that started the rumor keeps him in prison for 15 years kills his wife takes his daughter hypnotizes them introduces his daughter the guy's daughter to him, but not as his daughter, like makes them meet. They fall in love, ends up fucking his daughter. The guy is let go and he's trying to figure out what, who imprisoned him. And finally the guy tells him, it's like, you're asking the wrong questions. You shouldn't be asking, um, who imprisoned you, but why were you set free? Ends up discovering that he fucked his daughter. And this was a whole plot of revenge for that rumor he did during high school. Right. Cuts out his fucking tongue, begging him not to tell his daughter what had happened. The guy, like, smiles, gets in an elevator, shoots himself. And your brother was fucked up? He was fucked up because we. the thing is, you don't know that's his daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is just some guy that's been in prison for 15 years. His wife got murdered. You feel for him. He's put through torture, all kinds of shit, right? Okay. So you really feel for him. And this girl is like a hope. And he, like, finds love. And it ends up being his daughter because the other motherfucker want to get revenge. Because of some rumor he started like talk, started as a kid. Okay, Fucking great. All right, that 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 sounds fucked up. See that that that's good. That's what I'm talking about. It's good. You didn't right. pick someone that's like fucking. Anyways, what, you good. mean someone that killed a woman? You know what I mean? Like, shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! God. Yeah. Anyways, my number six. By the way, if you ever do want to see Old Boy, make sure it's the foreign version, not the Spike Lee remake, which was terrible. Okay, the foreign version. You heard yeah. it. And what year did that come out? Um, that came out in 2003. 2003. All right. My number six, Christopher Walken as Max Shrek from Batman Returns, 1992. Is that your Batman villain? Christopher Walken as Max Shrek from Batman Returns, Are there any other Batman villains I'm not in your telling top five? You, I'm not telling you who's on my list. I'm just not telling you who's on my list. But that, but, but that is my number six. First of all... The villain in Batman. First, I I think Batman Returns is probably the best Batman movie. Sure. Ever, you know. No. Um, I I know a lot of people are like the Dark Knight, the fucking Dark Knight. The Dark Knight is great until the end when we spend twenty minutes with fucking Two Face for no fucking reason. Yeah. And like, oh, uh, Gordon, it's your fault, Gordon. I can't have you. Like, shut yeah, up. That was unnecessary. What a waste. Yeah. It, it ruined the movie. It fucking ruined the movie. Like, way to end that fucking great movie. But anyways, um. But Batman Returns is great. Catwoman is not the villain. Penguin is not the villain. Penguin is like Anakin, a tragic villain. You know what I mean? P- Penguin. They did, kill children. I, I, Penguin, Penguin is Penguin is evil by all means, but 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 he's but but he has a sense of tragedy, which doesn't make him the real. The real villain is Max Shrek, who who just again manipulated everyone and just was really selfish, didn't care, went out and was he was evil. He was evil. He was evil. Christopher Walken did a great job portraying him. Uh, and it and it and it was great. It was just it was just it was it was a glance into the power and corruption of of corporate uh, corporations and 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 villains at the top. It's not even of Christopher Walken's crime. best villain role. Um, it, it, you, you, uh, I, that that's my number six. So fuck off, suck my dick. True right. romance. 
That, that's 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 my number six. So whatever, take it. Um, at Susie's Fat, do we have any Instagram or Facebook comments or questions? I've never seen any Doctor Who. Have you? I I don't watch Doctor Who. I've been meaning to check it. I just haven't. You know, it's it's a TV show, right? Yeah, it's a TV show. We're not we're not doing TV guys. We're only doing movies. We're keeping it to films. So. Yeah. Because if we were doing TV, this would be a whole different conversation. Totally different. Yeah. Con- agreed. 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 That. Hello? Oh, okay. I got you. All right. So here's the deal. Instagram and Facebook. We are going to say bye to you now. We hope you have a wonderful time. Uh, if you want to see our 54321, uh, go to our YouTube channel at Cor- uh, and search Corker Comics. You'll find us there, Atomic Pop. And our show should be up within the next day or so. After we're done filming it, got to make a couple of quick adjustments, and then we'll put it up. Those were my first. My next five are really fucking, it goes crazy. My next it's five. It's pretty dark. You're going to fucking hate my next five. Probably. You're, I already you are, hate your next five. No, you're, you're going you're gonna to slaughter me at, in my next five. You're just going to be like, I can't fucking believe it. When you hear my number one, I, your head's going to explode. You might die. We, we uh, Susie might have to give you CPR the fuck, when you hear my man. number one. Yeah, like seriously, like like, but it's so good. It's so good. I stand by it one hundred and fifty. And remember, if you kill children, you're just misunderstood. That's not what I'm saying. Fuck off. Anyways, fuck you. Fuck you in the ass. Okay, like 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 Batsy style. Anyways, okay. So, uh, bye Instagram, bye Facebook, bye, bye 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 bye. All right. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. Su- at Suzy Fett, make sure you share both of those. I mean, all right, great. But then exit out so we don't hear it. We don't want to hear that shit. Um, after you share it, of course. All right, so your number five, Wonski. Dr. Joseph Heiter. He's played by Dieter Laser, Human Centipede, 2010. I never saw it, but I saw the South Park episode. Yeah, so... <laughs> Which is about that movie. Human Centipede is insane, right? It's basically this uh doctor uh kidnaps uh two uh american students and a japanese male okay and um he basically decides to create a centipede out of them by sewing their mouths to their the other person's rectum obviously being in the front of the line is probably the best place to be absolutely so, yeah um there's absolutely. a lot of things they 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 try to escape so he like breaks their knees um it's 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 really gross this guy is that's that's pretty insane. Like, he's a villain that's fucking crazy. All I know is the South Park episode. Oh, by the way, the way the, the movie ends, too, is fucking crazy. Because the guy in the front dies, the girl in the back dies, and the one in the middle is left alive and sobbing when the movie ends. That's how it ends? That's how it ends. How do they die? Huh? How do they die? Probably from eating shit. The first guy? Um, The guy had some type... Oh, because of, I think, an infection. Because, because they had to cut up the their asses to be able to... Stitch the mouth. Ooh. Ooh. So, by the way, speaking of, since I know you're a huge fan of Back to the Future, um, Centipede's second sequence and third sequence, each one picks up right where the other movie left off and try to create an even bigger centipede. Out Wait, of it's people. a trilogy? It is a trilogy. Oh, my God. So I think the second That's stupid. Uh, the second movie involves like 100 people. And like the third movie's like a thousand people, something like that. That's it's ridiculous. Cra- yeah, That's it's, ridiculous. Yeah. That just gets stupid. Yeah. Ask the mouth. Uh, I just know the South Park episode is fucking. <laughs> the South Park episode is great. It's crazy. Like, yeah. oh burrito! I yeah. must eat the burrito. <laughs> <laughs> like, like. Anyways, all right. My number five is uh, Faye Dunaway as Joan Crawford in Mommy Dearest, 1981. I mean. No more wire hangers. I, I understand why you would put her, but all right, crazy. And this is this is real, man. This is something people can relate to. Um, a big majority of people can relate to is a crazy fucking parent, you know that that is abusive. And then when she dies at the end of the fucking movie, she doesn't leave her kids anything. Yeah, she strapped her her son into a bed growing up. You know, he, she put her daughter into a fucking private school. You know, and. And 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 she was self-absorbed. I and, hate your list so much. And man. and it was just, she she she's evil. She's fucking evil, evil. She's an evil human being. I mean, I guess you're evil as long as you abuse them and not kill them. No, dude, dude listen. Mom, There's a lot of women on your list. Listen, Mommy Dearest is a great, is a highly entertaining movie, and it, it's it's great. Mommy Dearest. I disagree. Number four, go. Number four, every single person in House of a Thousand Corpses, two thousand and three. 
That's so general, first of it's all. Very general. But uh, so, so here's a problem why I didn't want to narrow it down. In House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Reject. I've never seen either of those. Uh, you don't see horror, apparently. Yes. Like, they're, they're directed by Rob Zombie. Right, and it's like an ode to the old slasher films, and and the reason why I'm not trying to be like clever or anything, I included everyone, is because it's about a family who each has some kind of weird, fucked up way they like to kill, torture, or rape people, and they work together as a family. In the first one, it's this house. Uh, Captain Spaulding uh, runs a gas station. He sends people to this house. Um, they end up getting captured and go but through. But is it Captain Spaulding the villain? No, he's not the villain. Because they made a figure out of no, him. No, Dr. Right. Satan is the the basically head of the household. He's underground and does experiments on people. All right, so when it, again, when, don't, don't, shouldn't you no. narrow it down to that person? No, because the, they, it's creepy because they act as a family unit. What makes it creepy to me is that the whole family is involved. Like, there's no moral sender. There's no one that's like, yo, we're a fucked up family. Them working as a family is what makes it additionally creepy. And bigger than any just other serial killer I had on my list. Okay. Whatever, man. If you saw the movie, you'd understand. So that's your number four? That's my number four. Everyone in House of a Thousand Corpses. My number four is Kurtwood Smith as Clarence from RoboCop 1987. Tell me that guy wasn't evil. We need some parameters to these lists. No, we don't. Evil villain. That's it. Go ahead. Evil villain. Clarence from RoboCop is evil. And the fact that he was a dad on that 70s show is like, what? <laughs> you know? Like, you're going to tell me that guy's not evil? I mean. Listen, watch RoboCop, ladies and gentlemen. It's evil as fuck. You should watch RoboCop. Yeah, absolutely should. Movie. Yes. Anyways, go on. Number three? Yeah. Leatherface, played by Gunnar Hansen, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. Okay. Um, I'm assuming you haven't watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. Oh, excuse me a second. I'm super disappointed right now. What are you doing? About horror movies? All right, so Leatherface is actually based on a real serial killer called Ed Gein. Um... What's really scary about Leatherface is everyone knows about the whole chainsaw, but he actually wears the faces of uh, his victims. Yeah, that's fucked up. What do you have? Two phones? You got a phone there and a phone there. So he wears the. Uh, <laughs> he wears the what face. What the fuck was that, dude? What do you mean with that, dude? I. You got a rogue phone. It's a new phone. I got two phones. One for the good, the one for the. That's a that's a good song by Kevin Gates. That's some hood yeah. shit right there. So um. Leatherface kills people. This is your number three? Your top three villains ever. Yeah, he, dude, he skins, he makes I, lamps I, I, out I, of human skin. Cool, go for it, yeah. I mean, he doesn't make a Robocop corporation. He doesn't make a I, corporation. Go, go, and go, go. He doesn't spank his kids. I, go, but go. he wears the face of his victims. He makes lamps out of the skin of his victims. All right, cool. So out of every Villain. evil, horror, uh, sinister, corporate, whatever it is, Leatherface is I screwed up. I didn't delete some things, so we ran out of memory, and I had to adjust. We stopped at Leatherface, which was your number what? Three. Your number three. So my number three, we're going to have some deja vu. Ronnie Cox, who played Cohagen from Total Recall, 1990. Oh, my and, God. And uh, Dick Jones from RoboCop 87, which essentially is the same character. We could agree on that, right? Cohagen. You're doing the exact same. This is Cohagen. fucking weird. Cohagen. Cohagen and Dick Jones are essentially the same character, right? <laughs> what the fuck? It's not deja vu. He asked me the same way. They're essentially the same character, right? It's like your fucking personality is pre-programmed or some shit, dude. <laughs> Can you? I don't want to see your list. Yeah, that's what I said the last time, too. <laughs> so Ronnie, Ronnie Cox, Cohagen... And uh, and and because Cohagen's evil, he cuts off the air of the people and all that stuff like that. Whoa, <laughs> and, dude! <laughs> it's <laughs> holy it, shit! It, I did say all this stuff almost Eggs, the word same for order. word, though. And then what did you say to me? I'm I'm fucked up right now. I can't. I can't. Be, I can't I'm, I'm absolutely no value right now. You're no value. To your podcast, no, no sir. Value. Juan said to me, "Juan, see, I have a good memory." And Juan was like, Juan was like, no, explain, explain why, 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 why what, what made him so bad? You know, you know, other than because yeah. you know, whoa, 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 whoa. and I'm like, all right, in Total Recall, all right, for instance, since that's a movie that I listed, 
<laughs> I really said all this. So that's the movie I listed. Okay, he is he's the figure in power. Okay, and he controls the air on the planet. So he holds the citizens hostage. There is the rogue unit where they're actually the rebellion trying to free its citizens and get free air there. But Cohagen controls them and sends his goons out to go get them and kill them to control everyone and he knows the alien technology is there and he knows it's a possibility it'll put him out of business he doesn't care and the thing is too is like you know he puts his own best friend which we don't even know if it's hauser is real or we don't know if it's if it's quaid we don't know what's real we right. don't it's even throughout the movie we don't know right. we don't know and and cohagen is evil and you know what and for, for that matter i said robocop too because in dick jones he he kills he kills everyone. Which, by the way, back to Clarence real quick. My favorite scene is when he walks in and the girl and and that guy's doing coke off the girl's breast. And he's like, "Bitches, leave." Have you ever done that? No, I haven't it's done fucking that. Fucking fantastic. No, I haven't done that. No, it was, um, uh, doing so, coke off a woman's breast. No, I've I've never done okay. any of that. Period. Anyways, um, so uh, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, uh, Ronnie Cox, great villain. Dick Jones, uh, Cohagen, Total Recall. That's my number three. Okay. All right. Now back. It's now back weird. to reality. The rewind is over. Number two. Which number two? The system from falling down. Nineteen ninety three. <sighs> you told me you were going to do this, and I was like, "Don't do this." You don't understand. Because see, like Steve's a very healthy person. He makes a lot yeah. of healthy decisions, and good for him. Kind I. Of. I mean, I mean, not not. I, I wouldn't say so. Not not in my personal life. No, no, no. But yeah. I mean, like what you put yeah. into your body. You you make some very healthy choices. You don't do drugs. You don't wow. drink excessively at all. You know, and and you don't eat fast foods really, right? So you don't know what it's like to go into a Burger King at ten thirty two and ask for a croissant sandwich, and they tell you that they stopped serving breakfast at ten thirty. That's why McDonald's went all day. Fuck you, Burger King, and your fucking super strict time cutoff. Well, you know, I don't want to eat a goddamn Whopper at 10.32 in the fucking morning. I want a croissant sandwich, man. All right, time out. Listen, listen. First of all, you shouldn't be eating any of that stuff, period. Yeah, no, of course not. Yes. But I'm choosing to. Like, you don't need to be like Batsy, who eats Taco Bell all the time, you know? Right. I mean, we don't yeah. have to, but but we... Yeah. So, but that's not it. It's and, and trap- like, oh, it's the last time. It's the last time. It's traffic. Anal. It's the monotony of life. It's traffic. It's all these things that made... The character of Michael Douglas did he lose just it? lost his fucking mind and said, I'm not going to take this bullshit anymore. I'm not going to let the system run me over anymore. And it's what it's about, him trying to get to his uh, son or daughter for, for their birthday to give him a present. So let me get this straight. Top ten cinematic villains ever. You make your number two an ideology? Yes. An ideology that covers half your list. You're ridiculous right now. Well, the thing is, you're like Vader is is the is the ant to the fallen hero. Palpatine's the manipulator. I'm going even deeper. I'm saying the system is what created Palpatine, who manipulates Vader. So, fuck you. All right. You all know what I'm fucking talking about with that breakfast bullshit. It's specifically on there for that breakfast. All right. Thing. My, my, like my, my, Richard just can't you you get me right because he's we're doing villains and I'm saying the system in falling down is a villain and he's saying no but he's never had to go to like fucking you ever been to Burger King you want a croissant sandwich he, at 10 30 he doesn't know like, what you're talking about right. he doesn't know what you're talking about right he now fuck, exactly he knows what right, I'm talking right, about you just you just threw a question at him last minute right my number two is Heath Ledger from, as as Joker Yes, All right, sure. as the Joker from yeah. The Dark Knight. I mean, it, the role killed him, right? Which, by the way, to Richard, that's why we're doing our top ten cinematic villains ever. Because um, we're going to film another show after this. Yeah, so yes. uh, yeah, the Joker, mm-hmm. he was great. I mean, Heath Ledger ended up dying because... I don't know. He did not die because of this. I mean, you know, got into his head. He went into yeah, depression. No, no, you know. I, I don't think that was the Joker that did that. I just don't. No, no, no. I'm saying it's, it's a method, form of I method don't, acting. I, don't. I put Heath Ledger from The Dark Knight, uh, yeah. which came out in 2008, as the number two villain on my list because he is uh, he's anarchy. He's evil. He has no regard for life, including his own. And on top of that, what a fabulous job. When you watch him, you're just captivated by his performance. I mean, he's on the screen. No, he, he, he just it's, it's just. He changed the Joker. 
he changed the Joker forever, and and I don't think I don't think we'll ever see that. You know, well, yeah, we'll never see a Jack Nicholson Joker ever again. Who was pretty evil. Uh, I mean, and Jared Jared Leto yeah. Leto is whatever yeah, his name is. Terrible. Like like it's just I don't know what it was. You but know? Is, is it is it fair to call a sociopath evil? You're gonna say the Joker in Dark Knight wasn't evil? I mean, he's a sociopath. You're gonna say he wasn't evil? But we're we're trying to label him evil, but he has like no moral compass. So is it really fair? He doesn't consider yeah, himself evil. Yeah, no, evil. it's totally fair. Is it fair to label Burger King as the villain because they? Yeah. No. Because they're making a choice to fuck me over on no, my breakfast no, choice. No, 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 no. Listen, Heath Ledger's Joker is my number two. I I didn't want to make it my number one because first of all, it's not my number one. But second of all, I just thought that would have been a bit he too won the cliche. Oscar posthumously, right? He did. He did yeah. win the Oscar. I I just for the record, my 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 list has like Oscar winners on it for legitimate characters. Mm-hmm. You have like you know. You haven't seen you have, any you have, horror you, movies you have, ever. You have it's bullshit. You have bullshit. It's villains. not fair. You don't watch horror. You have bullshit movies. villains. Um, okay, so here we go, guys. The number one all-time baddie well, in cinematic history. You want to recap now? We're gonna do the recap. Fine. And then we give our number do one. Do the recap. Which go go ahead. So number ten was Anakin Skywalker. Number nine was John Doe from Seven. Eight was Alex DeLarge from uh, Clockwork Orange. Seven was Freddy Krueger, uh, Robert England. From Nightmare on Elm Street. Number six was Lee Wu Yin from Old Boy. Number five was Dr. Joseph Hyder from uh, Human Centipede. Number four was Everyone in House of a Thousand Corpses. Number three was Leatherface in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Number two was The System in Falling Down. All right. My number 10 was Kathy Bates. Uh, did you name characters or, or, or actors? I kind of went a mix. Okay. Well, uh, Annie Wilkes from Misery. Number 10. Number nine, Skeletor from 87's Masters yeah. of the Universe. Number eight, The Emperor from Return of the Jedi, 1983. Number seven, Alex from Fatal Attraction, number 80, uh, 1987. Number six, Max Shrek, Batman Returns, 1992. Number five, Joan Crawford from Mommy Dearest, 1981. Number four, Clarence Bartaker, whatever his last name was, from Robocop, 1987. Number three, Cohagen from Total Recall, 1990, can also be Dick Jones from RoboCop, same character essentially. Um, number two, The Joker from The Dark Knight, 2008. Here we are. We're at our number one all-time cinematic baddie. Come on, Juan, give it to me. What's your number one? Well, I mean, it's it's obvious who the number one villain in all film is, and that's Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs. No, no, played by no, Anthony Hopkins, no, no. 1991. He's not even the villain. But go on. Go. So I, my list is full of, you know, child murderers, you know, rapists, mice, mass murderers, fucked he, up people. He's not he, the villain of the movie. Hannibal Lecter is not the villain of Silence of the Lambs. And the reason is because if you look through my list, all these people are mentally disturbed, right? But why I put Hannibal Lecter above them all as a villain is because he's not disturbed. He understands what he's doing. He has no moral compass, but understands there's a moral compass, chooses not to follow it, and delights in who he is. That's why he's my number one villain, because not only is he evil, but he recognizes he's evil and relishes it. He is not even the villain in that movie. He, I mean, Yes, he's a cannibal that's evil. Yes, he's crazy. Yes, he kills people in that movie f- during his escape. And and he's very sinister. He did win an Oscar for that role, uh, and and it very well played by Anthony Hopkins. Absolutely, it catapulted him into uh, a different level of stardom. But the number one all time baddie, and he wasn't even the villain in that movie. The yeah. villain was the crazy guy that put people in the bottom of a well. I, I mean, you can make that sewed skin and 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 no. Uh, Bill, what was his name? Buffalo Bill. Yes. Yeah, Buffalo but, Bill. but and, and that was the villain. This is that's how great. Anthony Hopkins and Hannibal Lecter is that even though he wasn't the main villain, when you say Silence of the Lambs, you didn't even remember Buffalo Bill's name. Like, you say Silence of the Lambs, you think Hannibal Lecter. So good that they had to make a TV show out of it. They made sequels out of it. They made prequels out of it. Like, Hannibal Lecter... The character is great, but the character, is first of all, is not the villain. And we're and, talking and, about... And, and to, he, call, to call But you him, said a list of top ten to villains. To call villain. him the all-time baddie, I think, is, is. unfair. Like unfair like, to your list of no, like out of everybody, everybody. Like I'm sorry everybody that he doesn't in spank. cinematic history, that's your number one. Yeah, number one, hundred percent. Hannibal Lecter. I think you're fucking stupid. Go ahead with your number one. You're gonna think I'm stupid now. Yeah, you're gonna. I'm th- sure. No, no, this is gonna piss oh you off. Lord. This is gonna piss you off. This is gonna, this, is gonna, this might piss off a lot of our watchers as well. You ready? Lady Tremaine 
The Evil Stepmom from Cinderella, 1950. You're so fucking retarded, man. That's how is you just talk shit about Hannibal Lecter for five fucking minutes. No, she is the evil. She's so fucking evil, dude. Dude, this is. You know what? You need no. to take that list to a no. psychologist. No, listen. You have a problem with women. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because half the fucking list is just women. Maybe I'm just into gender equality. Did something happen to you? No. What, you're going to say women aren't evil like men? No, I'm saying all women are evil, but like. <laughs> They're not making my villains list. No. Like the stepmother, like what what the fuck did she do? She didn't let her go to the ball? No, you need to watch that movie again. Cinderella. Cinderella, the one the cartoon. Okay? Listen, I thought about this. I was like, come on, Disney has great villains that 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 and it's a rated G movie. It's for kids to watch and her portrayal is so she's evil. She's just an evil human being. But not and you and the way, and the number way, one the way that the way that she is drawn and directed and the way that her, she is voiced and the way the music Cruella brings her Deville in. is a better Disney choice. No way, no Cruella, Cruella Deville wanted to make a fucking I understand a she, coat she, of yeah, puppy. She, yeah, she wanted to make a coat of puppy. Yes, that is bad. But she's not portrayed as evil as the evil stepmother from Cinderella. The stepmother from from Cinderella, the way she is written and, and, and portrayed in that movie is evil. Watch. You don't even got to watch the movie. Just watch some clips on that shit, and you're like, damn, this girl's fucking evil. She is one of the... She is arguably the most, if not one of the most evil Disney villains ever. And Disney... Look, Disney has great villains. I don't think... You know, you can talk all the shit you want about Disney, but Disney has a great thing. Three of villains. I mean, we, we could do a top ten list of Disney villains alone, you yeah. know? But... But she is. I mean, Hook is a better villain. No, Hook is Hook is too, is 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 too funny. He's he's he kidnaps children. I understand what he does, but but he's but he's he, he there's a, there's too much jokes behind it. There's nothing funny about the evil stepmother in Cinderella. She is hands down evil. She and and the fact that it's a children's movie makes it even more like the hunter from Bambi. No, it's not. It's it. it it's not as evil. You don't you don't get to know the hunter. You get to know the stepmom. You see her. You get to you get to you're Scar. invested in her character. Scar is evil, but not as it it it, it, it does it doesn't hit the same. Dude, dude, it's it's a bad stepmom who wants the best for her kids. And you want to know what you, and, 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 and you want to know like, what makes it, you want to know what makes it e- more e- make, makes her even more evil. What's that? Is that there are thousands, if not millions, of people on this planet today that can relate to a parental figure that treats them the way that she treated Cinderella. That is real. That's real evil right there. That's real villainy right there. We're getting into some shit. We're going to talk about this. this, Wow. Like, for real. Yeah. She's she's evil. I'll stick with Hannibal Lecter. She's evil. So... Eats people's brains. Doesn't let... Not let them go to the ball. Maybe if Hannibal Lecter didn't let Clarice go dress nice to the fucking FBI, you would have thought he was evil. Yeah, you need to watch some clips again. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, once again, just like last week's list, my list is way more diverse than ones. My list is better, my just li- like last my, week's. My list crosses a- across cinematic history. I go back as far as 1950. I don't know how far back you go. I went back into 1971. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I had foreign films. Okay. I, I How's that for diverse? How, what foreign film clearly, did you have? Clearly, my cinematic knowledge is more diverse than yours. All right, whatever. Any other movies with strong women leads that you want to call a villain? <laughs> Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Anyways, listen, so that's our top ten yeah, villain list. I, Once I again, that. check out our store, Cork and Commerce. We have one on Pines Boulevard, on Pines Boulevard, just East University. We have one uh, here in Miami across from FIU on 107th and 8th Street. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube.com, search Cork and Comics, and you will see us right there for Atomic Pop uh, featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. I'm Stephen Corka. Juan Farage. And that's it.